All right, guys, what's going on? It's James from James Jeff Tiles. Uh, as you saw in the last video, I did edit the thumbnail. I understand Photoshop at the basic level now. Um, of course, I did before, back in high school. I took a business class, uh, but I'm getting back into it. It's definitely uh, a lot of tools to understand, but that video did really well, so of course, I'm gonna keep doing it. Uh, in today's video, if you read the title, if you looked at the thumbnail at all, I'm gonna be showing you how to tell if your crest gecko is a boy or a girl. So let's get started with that. I'm gonna take pair out and I'll just show you a quick example first and then we'll talk some more about it. So right here I have Skipper my male and Bella my female. And if any of you actually know how to sex crested geckos, you'll already know that this is the male. Crested geckos are extremely easy once they get to a certain age and I'll show you, I'll hold them up close to the camera and I'll tell you exactly how, it's super easy. So this right here is my girl Bella and you'll see right here where her tail would be it's super flat and it might look like there's a little bit of a bump and sometimes there can be just a little bit of a bump but once you see a male once you see two of them together if you have two different ones you'll know a hundred percent for sure and right here is my male and you can definitely see his bump is very very large and basically that what that is are his hemipenes uh, a lot of reptiles have two peens if you will and that little pouch right there is where he stores them. It's not his testicles per se, but it is uh, it is where he stores his peens. Now, on a lot of animals, such as snakes, mostly colubrids, and uh, leopard geckos for sure, you can actually pop the peens out. I've done it successfully once on this gecko. I'm not going to pop them out for you guys, but let me grab the female and I'll show you exactly how opposite they are. So you can see he's definitely got a little something extra underneath on the undercarriage. So why is it good to know the sex of your crested gecko? Well, if you're housing multiple, if, if, you, if you have pets, if you have one as a pet and you're thinking, man, I'd like to get another one, and your tank is big enough for another one, you really need to think about what sex your current crested gecko is. If it is a male, don't put another male in there. They won't get along, I can guarantee it. Of course, there's odd examples where, yeah, they do, and maybe they leave each other alone, and you don't see anything for a while. It happens, there's always an exception to the rule, especially with animals and how variable they are. But you never, in general, want to put two males together. I really wouldn't recommend putting a male and a female if you are just keeping pets, just because they will reproduce. You don't really need to do anything to get them to reproduce. You just put them together and leave them together. Uh, even if you took it out the next day, your female will probably still lay eggs because that's how crested geckos work. Uh, if you do have a female, that's really the only time you would want to add another one and you would want to add another female. Females can get along very good, very well, as long as there's not too many in, tuts, in a, such a small space and they have lots of cover to get away from each other and feel hidden. You also want to make sure if you're housing two together, you're feeding more often, you're feeding larger quantities. Uh, but males can actually reproduce to multiple females. So you'll see in my uh, rack back here, I keep my male usually in this rack, this or this rack, this enclosure has two females. This one's also got two females. About every week I switch them back and forth. And a lot of people say, hold on, I gotta sneeze. But, <coughs> excuse me. And a lot of people recommend, it's cause I'm looking at the light. A lot of people recommend if you have a male to have him in his own separate enclosure and you know put him in for a couple days leave him alone put him in for a couple days leave him alone i happen to know a lot about geckos i happen to have been working with geckos for multiple multiple years now and i know that this specific male does really well just bouncing back and forth in cages he's not constantly breeding uh he does occasionally i'd see him in there in breeding behavior but he's not over over pushing the females. He's not over pushing himself. Uh, you've seen a lot of leopard geckos that happens. The males will try to produce too much. And if you don't have enough females to contradict that, or you don't have a spot to get your male some rest time, he will breed himself to death. And you'll see that with females too, because he'll bite and they won't eat and everyone will be stressed out and they'll, they're laying eggs and losing weight. And it's really hard to get them to bounce back from that. So make sure you keep females together and if you're gonna breed crested geckos, do lots of research. Watch 20 videos, read five articles online, listen to a podcast. There's plenty of podcasts about reptiles nowadays. Uh, Morelia Python Radio, 
Port City Pythons from the ground up is a great one. I like Riley Jimerson and Andy Ray are making one. I keep saying that. I'll be doing one. I'll be working on it this weekend. So look out for that. I'm going to be talking about it. When we do ours, when we do our podcast for reptiles, I'm going to make sure to talk about Crested Geckos because that's what my YouTube channel is about for the most part. A lot of people want you to have uh, big, fat females. It's kind of like the thing to do is, you know, you have the fattest, the biggest, that's the healthiest. And it's not always the case. And a lot of times it actually means the gecko has a lot more fat. It can cause fatty liver disease and all sorts of stuff if you're not being careful. And that's really the breeder's job to be careful, to not just select the biggest, fattest animal every time. Uh, this is my largest female right here. You can see in comparison to my smallest female, uh, this is my smallest adult female. Uh, she's actually laid eggs for me and she's an adult. You know, she's very tiny, but I believe she's like three, two or three years old. She's been laying eggs. This girl, I don't know the age, she's at least four and she's also laying eggs. So it's really, uh, it's really varied in how big your animals are gonna be. But at the same time, it's still obvious that these are females. I swear, looking at my light for so long, staring at the camera and then going back and trying to find a gecko that's hiding is extremely difficult. It just, it's blinding. You think you're looking at a branch, but it's your gecko and you're just like passing over it 10 times. This is my male gargoyle gecko, especially, this is my male gargoyle gecko. You can see what I mean. It's the same concept here. It does have this bulge down here. And that's really important. Being able to tell the sex of your crested gecko or your gargoyle gecko or even your leopard geckos have something where similar where you can basically see it. I can tell from the side, I can tell from above on leopards, even though they're harder, for the most part, you can generally tell them apart. As a breeder, it's especially important to tell because when you're breeding, like I said before, the male goes to multiple females, you want to hold back multiple females more than males. Uh, the more females, the better it kind of just, it works out in your favor. That way you have more to breed your nice males too. And you want to sell the males, so the earlier you can sell the males, the better. If you can kind of see that they're looking male, you can sell them as probable males and you know get more out the door, price them low, get them out the door before you have to raise them up all the way. Because if you're stuck with a bunch of adult males, you're not gonna sell them that quickly. You want adult females, and if you have extra, that's awesome, because then you sell adult females ready to breed, people are willing to pay top dollar. And let's say it takes you $20, I keep using $20 for this example, I think it's about what it is. It's $20 to raise up a crested gecko, let's say. Uh, and it's, 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 you know, sellable size now, you, you know it's a girl. Um, but let's say you wait, let's say you raise it up for another year and it takes another $25. Probably not, but let's say it takes another $25 to raise it up a year. At that point, it's an adult female. Whether it looks nice or not, You've only invested $45 into it, and I can guarantee you it'll sell for around $100. Maybe 80, maybe 150, depending on how nice it is, can go even higher up, but that's really all profit right there. You're just increasing your profit margins just by holding onto it and putting a little bit more extra money into it. And same thing with expensive morphs like Lily Whites. The Lily White Gecko costs the same to raise as any other gecko, but when I sell babies, I'm selling them for $500 plus and all that's really profit. So understanding your crested gecko sex and being able to tell the difference between a male and a female is very important. There's lots of diagrams online, there's other videos. And of course, don't just watch this, think you're an expert, go watch other videos. There's tons of other people doing them. They don't take that long. Uh, there's all sorts of little information hidden in those, those videos that I didn't go over. It's just always a great tool. I know I definitely do that. There's books and stuff. If you're not into reading, YouTube's where it's at. That's what I do. I gotta run to Walmart. I gotta run to Winko. I gotta run to Rink Winko really quick. I'm gonna grab a big old bag of carrots and feed my roaches. Uh, it's definitely, they're getting back up. If you guys didn't hear, my roach rack uh, shut off at some point and reset itself really low. So the temperatures were off basically. The, the heat cable was off. You have on my ball pythons for like a week or two. Uh, and I had just sold a bunch of roaches, so nothing was breeding. I basically had no roaches. I started my colonies back up from scratch. I now have six colonies, and I need to go get carrots. I'm all out of carrots. I need to boost them up. I need to get them growing while they're big, so that way the percentage is amazing. So if, if I was pumping them when there was 100 roaches in there, and they grew at 10%, you're getting 10 roaches. If I bred them while there's 1,000 roaches in there, and they grew 10%, that's 100 roaches. So I wanna breed them now before I start selling a bunch more and just get them producing a lot more. 
What's up you guys, I'm back. I actually went to Walmart, so smaller bags of carrots and I want the same brand. Smaller bags, uh, I paid $7 for 10 pounds, which I would have paid 20, I would have paid $10 for 25 pounds at Winko. But I had to get a new computer mouse and I had to get a very specific one because I have a MacBook. Um, and it only has certain charging ports. But let me show you the way I do this. So I get my carrot. And you can see right here, I've got one, two, well, you can't see. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and a piss and cockroach colony. So I'm going to get three carrots out. And of course, it depends on the size of your colony. If you have a really small colony, obviously do less, but I have really dense colonies. And this one's off heat, so this one's going to get a little bit of carrot. These two are good sizes, so that's a huge chunk. So we're going to get good sized chunks of carrot. Like that. This one only has like five roaches in it because I'm being weird. So that's only gonna get a little bit. And this guy up here, I don't even know how many are here. That's got a little bit. Is that really all that's in here? Yeah. Okay. So that's gonna get a little bit. And then this one down here will get a lot. And this piece last will go to my hissing cockroaches. And I never really liked the whole thing where they can escape and junk like that. So I put them in a 10 gallon uh, inside a tub and I just tape it shut and it works out for me. Right here is actually my super worm colony. Um, I've obviously quit on it and I have a bunch of times now. This is like the third time I've quit on it. But my leopards are gonna come out of cooling soon and I definitely want to be able to fatten them up really quick. So I have a bunch of adult super worms in here. I'm just not letting them pupate by not taking them out and separating them, which is something you need to do. Uh, and I'm obviously not feeding them carrots as often as I should, and I'm sure some of them are dying because of that, but you know what? They're getting carrots, and they don't need a lot, so I just cut them off a couple pieces, and I move on to the next one. And if I really wanted to start this over, I could, but at this point, it's not something I have any interest in doing. I have confused flower beetles infesting my colonies. And I've said this before, they're not harmful in any way. They irritate me. So that's gonna be it for today's video. Uh, not a whole lot going on besides, you know, obviously I picked the topic and I talked about it. A lot of times there's just updates. Uh, it kind of varies. If you guys like this style, you know, let me know. I definitely do topics. Uh, it's not super hard to come up with them. Uh, eventually I will run out of stuff with just crusty geckos. But nevertheless, I'm James with James Jeff Tiles. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure to comment down below and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to instant message me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, jamesjeptons.gmail.com. Also, if you want to see pictures of my animals, make sure to hit me up on social media. And I'm going to take some pictures for the thumbnail. Have a good one.